Good morning, everyone. How are you? Today, we are talking all about blue bottle jellyfish stings. Now, my name is Sarah Hunstead. I am a paediatric nurse, mum of two, and also founder of CPR Kids. And at CPR Kids, what we do is we empower parents and families with the life-saving skills of baby and child first aid and also recognition of the sick child. And what I would love you to do is that you can give me just a quick wave or a thumbs up just to let me know that the technology is all working well. And remember, we will actually post this both to the Baby to Toddler Show page and the CPR Kids page as soon as we are done here. We'll put lots of links in the comments below so that you can learn more. And not only that, what I'd love you to do is tag any friends, family, whoever you think needs to know this good evidence-based information. So blue bottle stings can be absolutely horrible because they really hurt. And if you or your child have ever been stung, um, you know that the pain can absolutely be excruciating. I remember uh, my partner actually got uh, stung on uh, the basically around here on his torso. Um, he had actually seen the blue bottle floating in the water. My young daughter was next to him. And so he's grabbed her and kind of flung her away because their tentacles were floating there because he didn't want to have to deal with a kid who's been stung. And so what happened is a wave came and actually washed the blue bottle um, kind of underneath his um, the rashie that he was wearing. And he's described the pain as you know pretty excruciating. He said that the worst part was that the pain was actually tracking down into his groin um, and into his genital area that the pain there that just was shooting down was awful. So I certainly know from firsthand experience uh, that it can be incredibly painful. And uh, you can safely say that my older daughter then suggested that I wee on my husband afterwards. Now, that didn't happen because I actually do know uh, what to do. Um, so we know that it is not actually urine that is useful for blue bottle stings. Now, I just want to clarify as well, before we go any further, that today we are talking about blue bottle jellyfish stings, so otherwise known as a uh, Portuguese man of war. And it's important to differentiate these between other types of jellyfish, such as a box or an irigangi or anything like that when it comes to the first aid. And you know, certainly jellyfish in tropical waters, because that is very, very different what you will do in comparison to what I am talking about today with blue bottles. Now, but I will talk about those guys briefly at the end, but for now, let's stick to the blue bottle jellyfish stings. So first of all, what do we know? We know that often if there's a great big easterly wind, that it will blow these guys profusely onto the shores of the eastern side of Australia. Now, that is something that uh, we certainly see, but they can also be seen also on the western side as well, but they're more prevalent on the eastern side of the country. Now, certainly these guys are, are quite fascinating if you want to know a bit more actually about them that they are kind of colonies of little uh, different parts they're like these villages of um, of organisms which is quite amazing and they float from a long way out to sea and often uh, if you're out to sea you may see kind of platforms of these guys as well now I do have some photographs as well that I actually took uh, on a uh, actually I might see if I can make that a little bit bigger for you so you can see it there we go so I actually took this photo on a beach holiday um, that we went on pre-COVID and this was on the north coast of New South Wales and there were thousands of these guys everywhere absolutely thousands of them that were washed up that were still floating in the water and you know we needless to say we didn't go for a swim that day often on patrolled beaches that you will see that there is a sign that says blue bottle warning um, and generally people tend not to swim um, you know but you know it's your call if you still want to go in the water it's up to you but before we go any further there is something that I would like you to grab your phone right now and download. If you don't have it already, grab your phone, unless you're watching me on your phone now, then wait until we're done. But this is the Australian 
Bites and Stings app. So the Australian Bites and Stings app, I want you to have this in your phone because our brains, especially at the moment with everything that's going on in the world, are at capacity. Don't expect you to remember the first aid for everything that can bite and sting you in Australia. So I want you to download the Australian Bites and Stings app. And it actually has, uh, and it's free as well, uh, the people who have written it um, are in consultation with the Australian Venom Research Unit, uh, who are the absolute bee's knees when it comes to evidence-based practice for first aid for things that can bite and sting you. So we use the Australian Venom Research for all that we teach. And so this uh, has been uh, developed by them in consultation with others. So download this iPhone platform, uh, you know, Google Play, all the rest of it. It's free and it has got everything in it, including blue bottle stings, which is a good thing. So I might just switch across here and we'll come back to me and we'll talk about uh, what the first aid response is. So first of all, what are the signs and symptoms if you've actually been stung by a blue bottle? First of all, you can have, might be just mild pain or it can be absolutely severe pain, okay? So mild to severe pain. You may see on the skin, particularly in your child, because remembering kids have got much more sensitive skin than what we do. We are leathery old crocodiles in comparison to them. So you certainly on us and most certainly on them, you may see where the tentacles or the bell have actually made contact that you might see that there are raised red welts along there. There can be otherwise red marks on the skin. There can be swelling to the area. Uh, these tentacle marks could be purple as well, but often you can see perhaps red or purple raised areas over where it has actually made contact. So you can certainly see that. You may also see some blistering where that has made contact as well. Um, so little small blisters along those lines. Now, there may also be um, some swelling of the actual limb, not just where it has made contact as well. So that's another thing that you may also see. And I'd have to say just from, you know, experience of seeing kids who have come in uh, with these kinds of stings, pain seems to be the number one thing that causes, you know, mum, dad, auntie, uncle or whoever to bring them into the emergency department. So I worked in a children's emergency department that was less than two kilometres away from the very popular surf beach on the eastern side of Australia. So we used to get see this all the time in summer and certainly that pain is one of the greatest things. So there may also be some other signs of symptoms which can indicate that your child may be allergic or having an anaphylactic reaction to this and of course if they break out in hives or welts not just on the sting area but over their body if they have um, any swelling to the face, not where the sting is, say they've been stung on their arm, but they end up having any swelling to the lips, face, they have a hoarse voice, a constant cough, they have uh, strange breathing noises. These can all indicate that their um, airway may be swelling as well. And if they have any breathing difficulties, collapse, so they are pale and floppy, any of those signs of allergic reaction, that is triple zero immediately, really, really important. And of course, if your child has a known anaphylaxis or allergy to blue bottle stings, you are following their action plan and having their EpiPen ready. So that's an important thing. Now, Often what can happen is we can actually manage blue bottle stings ourselves. You don't often need to be going to the hospital unless their pain is uncontrolled or a couple of other things. When would this be a medical emergency that you need to call an ambulance? Number one, of course, if they are having an allergic or um, it's, whether it's, you know, a, a mild or moderate to a severe, uh, I think that regardless of what that is, they need to be seen at the hospital. Of course, a severe one, triple zero immediately and EpiPen if available. So that's an important thing. Other reasons why you may take your child to the hospital, number one, if their pain cannot be controlled and it is severe. 
Number two, if the sting is to a sensitive area such as the genitals, um, often under the arms, uh, certainly any to the face at all, to the eyes. If you have actually or your child has had a sting to the inside of the mouth and it happens, it actually happens. This is an incredibly sensitive area and what we don't want is particularly if anything has been inhaled or swallowed that there is swelling to the inside here because that can definitely affect breathing. So we don't want that to happen. So of course immediately or if the sting is across the face across the neck or even circumferential across the torso where there may be swelling that impacts on our breathing again the other time too is if what we call a this sting is circumferential around the ring the limb what we mean is is that it's gone around and has wrapped itself around the limb. So what that can mean is that it causes that limb to swell, which can cause issues with circulation, and we don't want that to happen. So any of those things, or if your gut says something is really wrong, because remember, you always trust your gut, then please seek urgent medical help. But if it is manageable there, that they've perhaps just got a sting on their arm, what are we going to do? What is the first aid response? Okay, so first of all, we are going to, are you ready? We are going to flush the area with copious amounts of seawater, okay? We're going to try and flush those stings off, okay? Because in those tentacles, there are these things called matocysts. And what they are is that they fire off and they're releasing the venom as such or the toxins as such that cause the pain and everything. So we want to try and flush those away with copious amounts of seawater, not fresh water, okay? Not fresh water, seawater. We are going to pick off any remaining tentacles and the important thing to remember is we are not rubbing with sand okay a lot of people will actually tell you oh now you get the sand and you rub the area and it helps relieve the pain it gets them off and it's all good uh it it, it might feel okay at the time but what it's doing is is not good for the skin so what we actually need to do is copious amounts of seawater and picking off any remaining tentacles and then what we are going to do is hot water. It is not urine. It is not ice unless you are, for example, at a beach that's not patrolled, um, there's no showers or anything there, which, of course, is most of the beaches around Australia, really. And so what you're going to do is you can apply ice over the top purely for pain relief until you get to a place where there is hot water. Now, it's hot water, as hot as the person can stand, but remember children will burn at much lower temperatures, so you don't want it to be too hot, okay? If it's a teenager, for example, or you know an older child, don't let them judge how hot the water is because they're in so much pain, they're going to misjudge how hot that is and they can end up burning themselves. So. You do it, you test the water, you make sure that it's okay, that it's not going to burn them. You then submerge that burned area, oh, burned area, good gracious, now I'm onto burns. You then submerge the stung area in the hot water for 20 minutes, okay? So after that 20 minutes, and of course, give them some pain relief too, give them some ibuprofen or paracetamol following the directions on the bottle, of course. And then once that 20 minutes is up, take it out, okay? If it is still painful, then what you can do is after a few minutes, you can actually submerge that again and keep that in there for another 20 minutes. Then take it out for around 10 minutes, pop it back into the hot water. And you can repeat this for up to two hours, okay? If it is still not relieved by then, then I would definitely be taking your child for a medical review to find, you know, to do, they obviously need more than just that. And of course, if anything changes, any of those things that I was talking about before that mean that your child needs urgent medical help, or if your child deteriorates, something's wrong, trust your gut and please, please, please seek medical help.
Now, why does a hot water work? So apparently what it does is it denatures the, um, the toxins. So it stops the toxins from working. It breaks them down. Um, that, that's uh, perhaps if anybody out there is a toxicologist, you may be saying, Sarah, you just use the wrong words. But denaturing or breaking down is what it does. I'm trying to just make it into simple language there. So any toxicologists, I'm very sorry out there if I haven't described the process properly. So I hope that has been helpful. If anybody does have any questions at all, can you please just type them in the comments below right now? Now, what I said that I would do at the end is talk a little bit about other jellyfish as well. What I want you to do is on your Bites and Stings app that you are about to download or you have just downloaded, I want you to, whoa, there we go, have a look at the different types of jellyfish and what you need to do. So what it's about is, now we always say, don't swim in an area until you know about it, okay? If you go, like I, my family and I, we did a trip around Australia. We went to some of the most remote beaches in this country. We didn't get in that water till we'd spoken to a local about what we needed to do, what we needed to know about. So if you're going to a place you haven't been before, be aware of what kind of creatures are going to be in that water. Know if you're in tropical waters. You know, know that if it's stinger season or not. So always be armed with that knowledge. We say be aware of, you know, the actual, the waterway of rips and things like that, but also be aware of the creatures that are there as well. So just to recap before we finish up, always trust your gut. Call an ambulance if your child has had a sting that they are having an allergic reaction to. If it is on a sensitive area, such as an eye, the inside of the mouth, around the neck, around the torso, anything that might inhibit their breathing. And of course, if it is wrapped around a limb, because that can certainly cause swelling and circulation problems. And always trust your gut, okay? Otherwise, the first aid is to wash with copious amounts of seawater, pick off any remaining tentacles, no rubbing sand or anything like that on there, okay? Then we apply hot water. If there is no hot water, then absolutely use ice, a cold pack. There might be a kiosk near where you are. Can you get an icy pole and pop it on there? Are there lifesavers there? And I've noticed that Alison has actually uh, just said that Lifesavers might give you a cold pack or some ice. Um, is this because they don't have hot showers on hand? Absolutely. Um, of course, it, yeah, that's exactly right. So, you know, a hot shower, that can be really tricky. Um, you know, often at beaches, there might just be a, um, you know, a cold water rinse off shower. There might not be anything, okay? So therefore the ice is to give some pain relief until you can get to the area with hot water, wherever that may be. It might be home. Um, it might, but, you know, it's about thinking outside the square when it comes to first aid. So thank you, Alison. Absolutely. Lifesavers will probably give you a cold pack or some ice in the meantime. And often they'll have those cold packs that you just crack and they become really cold. Keep that on for pain relief until you can get to that hot water. So thank you, Alison. So... That is pretty much everything. What I'd love you to do, remember, comment below on what you would like us to bring to you next time because we'll be back again next week doing this. I hope that next time you go swimming, you don't encounter one of these creatures and I will see you all very soon. Okay, thanks everyone. Bye-bye.